Hey guys, a lot of you guys always ask me if any of my shots were taken with the flash. You're always asking me, what flash did you use? How did you light up the subject? What strobe are you using? And the truth to that is that I don't use any flash. The shots you see are just raw raw images that were post-processed by me. Now before we begin, I just want to say that I'm not a technical person. I don't know how to measure dynamic range and how many stops it has. I'm just a person that learn through trial and error. And I can't tell you the science behind what I do, but I can only show you how I do things. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how I saved this shot from here and took it all the way to here. Let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It is me, I am Tung. And today I'm gonna to teach you how I save this high dynamic range shot right here in today's video. It's a Lightroom tutorial. We're gonna do everything in Lightroom, no Photoshop required. Every time I post a photo in the Fujifilm Facebook groups, a lot of you guys are always asking if I use any lighting equipment. And the answer is no, I don't use any lighting equipment. Everything I do is just, it's just me editing uh, my RAWs. If you edit your RAWs a lot and you know your way around Lightroom, it's, it's pretty easy to get the effect as if you lit the subject. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I did that because with this shot right here taken in the Gold Coast with the lovely Hillary, my beautiful wife, it's heavily backlit. And you can tell right here that over here that the, the highlights are super blown out. Look, all, all, this, all the information in the reds are totally lost. And this was shot with the Fujifilm X-T2. So it's gonna be a X-T2 RAW, which means that if you use an X-T3 or an X-T4, you have nothing to worry about because I believe that those cameras have improved dynamic range. We're just going to use this one and then you can see my thought process on how I did it. And hopefully you can take what you learn here and try to implement this on your photos. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this in the uh, description box down below. You can click the link and download it. And if you want to follow along, you can follow along with me. So let's just get started. I, I'm looking at this photo and I already know I can see that, you know, again, the highlights are blown. So what we're going to do is just bring back the exposure so we can have like a starting base on what it is that we need to do. And I think before we go any further, I'm going to change the white balance to warm it up a little bit. Right now it's at 5200. We're gonna put it to 56. And then we're going to change the profile from Adobe Color to Classic Chrome because I think the Classic Chrome looks best. And then from so on, from here, you can already tell there's a big difference from uh, before, this is the before and this is the after. We saved a lot of highlight details already. So you see here, we can see the silhouettes of uh, people in the background, right? And we can see like the light posts and all that. This is the before and this is after. So we brought back some detail already. Cool. And then we can already see like the clouds in the background here. Another thing is, let me see. It's still blown out. The highlights still blown out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back the highlights a little bit more to save some more details. And then we got right now, there's no more clipped highlights in the photo. So if I reset the highlights back to 100 um, to zero, you can see that you can see this as opposed to this. So we saved a lot of details in the highlight section right here. We got the clouds back and we got more, I think, I guess it's like the building in the background. So we saved some, uh, we, we saved some of that over there. And after that, we're just going to boost, boost the shadows up a little bit to like right here. I think that's a good starting point. And from here, the photo still looks a little bit flat. So we're going to have to add some contrast into this. Uh, let me. Uh, we're going to add, just pull back the blacks. Pull back the blacks until you start seeing a little bit of that. Do you see this part right here? That crushed black. This is when you start seeing black like this, that's mean the blacks are crushed. So we just want we just want to pull it back until we start seeing a little bit of it. That's how you know. And that looks good. And then the whites pull it up just a little bit. Not too much. I think one is good. And then from there, um, I'm going to add my S curve. Everyone knows about the S curve by now. 
boom to add a little bit more contrast so i'm gonna bring down the shadows a little bit and then bring up the boost up the highlights just so we can get more uh, contrast and here i'm just gonna lift the shadows up a little bit so it gives it that lift the shadows look sort of like a filmic look um this is how you do it okay so so you just go up and down depending on your taste i i'll leave it about here we don't want the whole thing like that and we're just going to leave the hue saturation hsl tab alone and then i'm just going to go into the color grading and with the color grade you can see that uh, the sun right now is an orange glow, so I would like to add more to it. I want to add like an orange a, an orange color into the highlight, so we're just going to do that. My intentions with adding more orange into the highlights is just to intense the effect of this of the sun intensify the the shot because of the sun. okay, so we're just gonna do that right there. Okay, let's see. bring it up a little. And from there, I'm just going to do my masking. You don't want to sharpen the entire photo. So what you want to do is just add your mask onto it. And anything with the, the white lines are sharpened and anything that is black is not sharpened. Okay. So where it's, I think 80 looks good. We just want the, we just want Hillary to be sharpened her, her edges, especially. And Click horizontal, make sure everything's straight. And from here, I'm just gonna change my hues to like seven and then my green my green hue, hue shifted to the right. 11, nine, that looks good. So from here, if we click the before and after, we saved, we saved a lot of details. We, uh, we saved an image, it looks, somewhat decent uh from here some people will say this is done already but we're, we're just going to go we're just going to continue just a little bit further and just make it pop a little bit more and another trick that i like to do is to darken uh the background so that the subject would uh, pop even more because of the separation right so what we're going to do is we're going to click select subject adobe lightroom does a great job at masking now because of the recent update so you don't need to brush in your mask anymore. This is like an accurate and a better way and a faster way of masking everything, okay? So Adobe Lightroom is really smart with that. And it did a good job at selecting Hillary, but we don't want to select, select Hillary yet. We're going to click invert so that the entire background, um, we're going to bring down the exposure for the entire background, just a smidge so that we can get Hillary to pop up more. So from here, I'm just going to bring it down one. Maybe by 0.2, that's all you really need. And if you want, you can always like change the hue up a little bit for artistic liberty. You know, if you think it's a cool color, you know, we can do something trippy like a blue light, but that, that looks very unnatural, but we're just gonna bring it down like what negative yeah that seems about right that seems fine let's see before and after yep it's starting to look good and from here we're gonna do the same thing after you bring down the exposure of the background what i like to do is add a little bit of exposure onto the subject so we select we select subject again and then what we're going to do is just bring up the exposure very slightly on uh, for Hillary. One, two, let's see, two. I think two, I think point two looks good. We will we'll leave it at that. And this is where people think that I use a strobe or some sort of lighting to help, to help light the subject, but it's not the case. It's just me editing just like this. This is how you do it. And there are ways you can do it to make it look overdone. So again, Everything you do should be very subtle. We're gonna continue on. I think this looks really good, but I think there's one more trick that I wanna show you before we can say that it's complete. Um, so let's just go in right now to subject. Now you can see the sky is sort of washed out and there's no color to it. And what I like to do, right, is to bring back some of the colors because here, like, 
what we have here looks fine, but I think if we add some colors into the sky, it just makes it pop a little bit better. Look, the image looks a little bit better. So what we're gonna do is select sky. And because uh, Adobe does such a great job at selecting the sky, selecting the subject, uh, I'm not going to go change anything about that. From here, like again, like I said, that the sky looks like it's washed out, right? So what we can do is uh, once we select the sky, we can just change the temperature so we can get back some of that sky. Cool. And now we got, now we got blue skies. Isn't that cool? That's so cool. <laughs> and let's see what else we can do. See, we can bring back the highlights even more if you want. If you want to try to save more details, try to squeeze out some more dynamic range, you can do that too, like I did right here. Uh, let's go let's zoom in right here. If we zoom into the sky, if we go, if we reset the highlights back to zero, you can see that we there's still more information to pull back, so we can pull it back even more, and then we save a little bit more details in the the cloud, the cloud textures, the clouds, the highlights. Cool. All right. <laughs> and I think from here we're almost done. There's not much else you need to do except you know your your final touches. If you want to add more contrast to make it even like pop even more. If you want to add some clarity, I'll just add a little bit of clarity. And if you want to add some vibrance to make the color pop out even more. And from here, let's just go check the before and after. Boom. This is the before and this is after. But I just want to say that, you know, even though this is like uh, this picture right here is technically incorrect because as a golden rule, you're supposed to like preserve your highlights and preserve details and not get everything, not get so many things lost in the background. Like you see here, you see like lampposts and stuff all, all lost because of the highlights. Um, I just want to say that, you know, this picture works because of that strong sun, that strong glow, that is that we have backlighting Hillary and it just makes her look like a superhero. Like we have this like aura around her and this glow that just like uh, lighting her silhouette. And I think that's a very, very cool look. Again, like I said, it's not technically correct, but in this instant it works, right? And even though we lost details around this area, I still think it's a good shot. Sometimes you just need to like break the, break away from that rule a little bit or else you're never going to like stumble, stumble upon an image like this. This is me editing for like the past five, six years. This is me just fucking around Lightroom, seeing how things work and understanding the, understanding how much information is in the Fujifilm RAWs. And there's a lot of information that you can save you can manipulate, you can pull from. So um, when people ask me if I use flash or not, I don't, I just do this. And I, I'm gonna leave it here, guys. I hope you learned something from this tutorial. I hope you guys are following along. And if you, uh, if you are, let me know in the comments how you feel about my editing technique, style and stuff like that. I know it's, I think it's a little different from most people and how people edit their photos. But again, this is me. This is me from a long time ago, just learning how to edit and then, you know, just fucking around and experimenting. And this is why I know how to save images a lot. And this is why I feel people are always asking me if I use flash or not. And in the end, I don't. But yeah, that is it for me, guys. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments section below and um, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I hope you learned something from this tutorial. And once again, my name is Tung, and I'll see you in the next video. I love you.